Hello there, it's the 17th of January 2020 and there's going to be a frost tonight. So it's going to be down to 0 degrees C, which is about 32 degrees Fahrenheit. So there we go. So what I've done is just use the usual frost protection over the blood orange there, the older mini miniature greenhouse cover and the uh, bit of um, net curtain over the top. But today I want to talk a little bit about grafting. So grafting is a great way to propagate fruit trees, okay? Not just fruit trees, other things as well. But for the purpose of this channel, you know, I've shown how to graft apple trees before. So check out my grafting playlist if you're interested. Now, I'm not going to say I'm a pro in this because I'm not, but I can say that I have grafted and I have had some trees turn out quite well from that so check out the playlist if you're interested in how to do that and my regular viewers will have seen many of the trees I've grafted over the years a very much worthwhile thing to do with regards to propagation and really not that difficult if uh, one is really interested in it so check out my playlist Stephen Hayes Fruitwise is another very good uh, source on this and of course there are going to be many others as well on YouTube and also on the internet and in books and from people you know. So really get into grafting if you want to learn a great method of propagating fruit trees. So there we go. So where am I going with grafting? Now what I've got here, these are some scions that I cut today from a cooking apple tree. Now I'm not 100% sure what variety it is, but uh, I would imagine that it's from a Bramley tree. So what you do is you cut a piece of the previous growing season's growth. So now it would be a piece of last year's growth, okay? So you can see what I've got there. Look, a nice healthy looking bit of last year's growth. So what we're going to do is go out and have a look at a fruit tree now, an apple tree, and I'll show you um, what it looks like on the tree. Right, so you can see in front of me here this apple tree. Now, this is a apple tree variety Worcester Pearman, okay? Now, you can see the tree there, and I'll just uh, show you the whole tree so you can see it. There you go. Purchased this from Mail Order Trees a few years ago. Now, if you take a look at this, right, so you can see what's referred to as the center leader. Up the middle here, and it goes out into the tree. So the last year's growth looks like this. So this would have been probably from a couple of years ago, and the new growth about now will be a slightly different colour to the growth that uh, you know is older. So you can see just that bit there. I'm trying to get this clearer for you. I know it's. Uh, I'm doing this now at uh, this time of night because I like to keep my videos close to the time in which I'm thinking about things. So there you go. You can see what the growth looks like there, just like that. So what you'd do is you'd snip that bit off about here. Same again. You can just see. Look here. Look. This is a much better angle. There you go. Much better light. You can see where the older growth is. And then the new growth starts there. It's sort of like a, a brown colour as opposed to looking a bit more sort of green, greeny brown with the older wood. Because the older wood, you know, algae has had time to, to grow on it. There you go. You can see that clearly. So this is the new growth. This is the older growth. You see the algae on that formed. And of course, with the newer growth, the algae has not had the time to form. So that can be a good indication. So there you go. Another bit there. And what you do once again is snip that bit off. So you can see this tree, if I wanted to take some scions from this, has put out some really nice bits of growth last year that I could, if I wanted, you know, choose to sort of snip them off and uh, use them for the up-and-coming grafting project, which we're going to talk a little bit about now. Okay, so many of you will be aware that recently I've spoke a lot about permaculture, backyard orchard, food forests, and you can do this in your own small garden, your garden, however big it is, allotment, community area that you're, you've got permission to do these sorts of things in and you can graft yourself as well. So you do this to propagate a variety that you'd really like to get hold of and continue that and reap your own rewards with, with regards to the crop that comes from that. And you can also use it to um, you know, add additional varieties to an existing tree and this is very fascinating because you can have maybe two varieties or maybe even more onto one tree. In fact, let's go and have a look. Right, so this tree here, now this is one I grafted a few years ago and 
I've got one variety on here, Winter King, otherwise known as Winston, which is a fantastic long keeping apple. And if kept under ideal conditions, can keep, is said to keep up until about April, March, April the following year. So that's very, very good and was very important, or would have been very important, and indeed could be important during the times when you, you, know, you can't get like refrigerated apples that have been cold stored, whatever, throughout the season. And here is another variety that I grafted onto the same root stock. And this is, um, I I believe uh, it might be Lord Lambourne, but uh, I forget. But this one is definitely Winter King, otherwise known as Winston. So you can see the root stock down here, look. That's the root stock there. And this is where I made the graft. So there you go. So um, I use a form of cleft graft, okay? So the way I graft, you'll have to have a look on the uh, playlist if you want to see me doing it. But, um, you know, this can produce apples on both um, both spurs here. I'm growing them as cordons, but or as a, as a cordon with two uh, varieties on, and this could be very good. I mean, in, in the future, this one here, if this gets big enough, or maybe even this year, I may even consider putting a third variety onto that, and that'll be quite a, a nice thing to do. So yes, very much worth looking into is grafting, and here is a very sort of a, an example of it in my own backyard. Okay, so grafting. Now, you've got a few options here. You can either, you know, graft onto an existing tree, um, something like that, or you can purchase yourself some root stocks, which is a great thing to do, because if you purchase root stocks, you will know the size of, hopefully, know the size of the eventual tree that you're going to get. So let's say you, graft, you want a half standard tree, um, MM106, I believe, Mailing Mauling 106, I think that's the name of it, is the rootstock for apples you'd graft onto. Um, M26, if I'm not mistaken, is a dwarf, and M111 is um, a much larger tree. But uh, don't take my word for this to research it, but you can hopefully you know, research the different rootstocks you could use. You could use them for, you know, you can get them for pears, apples, you name it, more or less, you can get them. And a great place to get rootstocks from, I've found, is Blackmore Nursery, okay? All my rootstocks I've grafted onto have come from there, and they've all been brilliant. And the way that I've normally went around graft, went about grafting, excuse me, is to buy the rootstocks, say, like, now, because they come bare-rooted, grow them on, and I grew them on in pots, you know, for the entire up and coming year. And then next year, I would then graft onto an established rootstock, okay? It's been in the pot for a year and put some roots down. That's why I've always done it. But this year, what I'm planning on maybe doing is getting three or four rootstocks, maybe a few more, and grafting straight onto them and getting them going and seeing just how they do. So that's one thing I'm going to do. For grafting, you normally need a few basic things. Um, grafting tape, which is very similar, or maybe even might be flower arranging tape. A good knife for grafting. Um, they're so good that once I sliced my finger with it, so you know, be careful, don't do that. Um, I used Stephen Hayes' recommendation for this, and I used the Open All Six, which is a French made. Um, knife, like a fishing knife. It may even be a fishing knife, but it's great for grafting, or it might be, you know, a grafting knife. So you want the grafting tape, and you want the um, you want the knife. Open with six, I used as different numbers, and that you know you can use wax, but I've never bothered with that. Just them two things, really. So yeah, look into the playlist, look into grafting, and it's a great thing to do and exciting. And I think out of all the grafts I've done. Um, every year I've done them, I think I've got a maybe a 60 to 70% um, success rate, which I think is quite good and maybe a little bit, uh, might have even been higher than that. So there you go. Any questions or comments on grafting, please feel free to post them down below. But uh, I'd recommend people, if it interests them, you know, to have a go at grafting. And it's, you know, it's really not that difficult um, and very beneficial as well. And, you know, some people are like, oh, I don't like the idea of grafting because it's, uh, it's unnatural. Well, humans have grafted at, uh, trees for thousands of years, okay? Um, don't quote me on this. I think I've read that the Romans used to do it, okay? But, uh, you know, do your own research on that one. And it's a way to, you know, to propagate an existing um, thing that you want to. Maybe you want to carry on a heritage variety. Maybe you want to just have, you know, 
you like that one. And of course, you buy if you buy rootstock for a few quid um, and you get a great tree out of it, you can save yourself a bit of money and you can choose a variety you want. So there we go, grafting. If you like my work, please feel free to like, share and subscribe. And what you would do with these here, what I've done, best practice would be to store them in the fridge or something like that. But what I'm going to do is leave them, you know, I'm going to leave them in here because it's pretty cold, particularly at the moment. But the general idea, you'd cut them during deep dormancy. So February would be ideal, but it just so happens that I was at this tree today. So I've taken them today. We're not, you know, we're, in, we're well into January, aren't we? So here they are in here. You don't want to let them dry out too much, particularly if they're in the, you know, the fridge. You could wrap them in a bit of newspaper and then just, you know, gently keep them moist, not soaking. And when I grafted, I usually grafted, I think it was in April, but I'll have to uh, just check when I did that. But um, yes, so look into grafting. Dan underscore Home Gardens on Instagram. And I recommend you give it a go because it can be very... A really exciting thing to do for your backyard orchard food forest permaculture project or your allotment. Take care and speak soon.